I wish there was just more compassion. No, we don't want to make something difficult. We just want to be acknowledged. My daughter was a victim and she's being punished. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of The Wednesday Checkup. Sorry we're in the crazy uh, furry rug space here today at YouTube, but I wanted to get this video out as soon as possible. When I heard that there was a video made between anti-vax and pro-vaccine folks, I decided to watch it and give you my reaction live right here, first time watching it. I'm Bob Sears, I'm a pediatrician. A pediatrician who's anti-vaccine. Interesting. His passion is just to help encourage uh, full, complete, informed consent for vaccinations. Doesn't sound like he's anti-vaccine. He said he's in favor of informed consent. I think all doctors, at least they should be for informed consent. Curious where this is going. Well, I was vaccinated as a child, but my last vaccine was about 15 years ago when I returned to college and I had a severe reaction in that I became arthritic in my hands, went to many, many doctors and nobody knew what was going on and why it was happening and just shrugged like, it doesn't make sense, you're too young to have arthritis. And it wasn't until having kids and sort of digging into my own research for them that a lot of answers started coming up. And I think it's unfortunate that a lot of it is overlooked. I guess maybe I'll participate in this. This could be a cool way to do it. Uh, I am vaccinated. If I were to have children, they'd be vaccinated. And I am a doctor who's pro-vaccine. Becoming an anti-vaccine activist based on your own experience of having a negative outcome to a vaccine, to me, is not wise. And I'll point out why I believe that. If you look at the statistical evidence between the harms that can come from vaccines, because there are some harms, and then you look at what you're preventing, essentially what are the benefits, what diseases are you preventing by getting a vaccine? There's so much benefit there. Horrible that the mother and activist had this thing happen to her, but it, it shouldn't be the sole reason for why someone believes that vaccines are bad and that they're anti-vaccine. I will acknowledge, of course, as a pediatrician, I know vaccines work. I know they give you protection. They, they vary greatly in what that protection is. It's not like 100% magical shield over you completely. I don't understand where this doctor falls under anti-vaccine if that's his stance. I think when you're giving kids medication, you have to get micro about it. I don't think it's doing your kids any service to just say vaccines are all made the same and they're all safe and healthy and good for you, that everybody's benefiting from it because She's that's right. false. It's not But we not study true. them before we release them to the public. We study them so we do know they're safe. That's the thing is we safe ish. Well, they're safer. I, you know, being an intensivist, I see the worst of the worst. And so seeing the other side of kids who don't get vaccinated, I saw a kid walk in with meningococcemia, which I haven't seen in decades. He had all four limbs cut off. They had to be amputated because it was all dead tissue. You forget how bad things were before we had vaccines. I'm really proud that the intensivists took this route because many times subspecialists will often uh, run to talking about statistics or studies and research. And to people who are not uh, of scientific education, it's difficult to relate to that, but when you tell a powerful story like he just did, that really strikes the message home, that children are dying, they're losing limbs unnecessarily. I agree with the mother on the vaccine issue. Th this shouldn't be a macro issue, this is a micro issue. Each vaccine should be evaluated. But the truth of the matter is, is they are. We don't just say all vaccines are good. We look at each individual vaccine. Each individual vaccine has a different set of adverse reactions, aka bad things that can happen as a result of getting them. But again, the trade-off in taking the risk of having one of these adverse reactions is the protection from the disease that we hope to prevent or even eradicate at times. I don't like the assumption that if a child is unvaccinated, somehow they are of risk to everyone. And also knowing that vaccinated individuals can also be carrying and spreading diseases, I think it's very polarizing to separate the two as if, if you're vaccinated, you're totally fine. You're not risking anybody anything. I disagree with her because if you're vaccinated, it doesn't mean you're not risking anyone. It means when you're vaccinated, you're doing your job to protect those who cannot be vaccinated. It doesn't mean that you're a great person. It doesn't speak uh, to your lack of ability to do harm, but that's not what the point of the issue is. The point of the issue is if you choose not to vaccinate your children and you're okay with your child getting measles or one of these illnesses, what about the children that have an immunodeficiency or have some sort of other issue 
that they can't get vaccines. And as a result of that, your child then spreads a deadly illness to them and they die too. Anybody could be spreading diseases, especially things like polio and pertussis that are not completely covered by the vaccine. Again, I agree that not everybody's covered, but if you can reduce that likelihood, why wouldn't you? I started out vaccinating my daughter because I believed all the same things that you said. It wasn't until she had a reaction and several reactions that I actually had to look at it differently where I, I realized by continuing vaccinating for her, that actually would hurt her. And yet everyone wants me to do it for the population. This is a very specific situation. This is where things get tricky. If you're having adverse reactions to vaccines, I don't think there's any doctor in the world who says, continue getting vaccines to protect all of us. It doesn't matter if the vaccines hurt your daughter. In fact, one of the first questions I ask before I administer vaccines is, have you ever had adverse events? What were they? And we investigate them prior to giving vaccines. If your child, for some reason, cannot get a vaccine because of adverse events, you fall into the population that needs to be protected by herd immunity. A number of families who look into vaccines, they will decide to opt out of vaccines because they feel they are just not willing to risk the side effects. But the side effects are the side effects are like one in a million, one in two million. No, Whereas no. the side effects from the diseases, when I see all these outbreaks and things like that, I'm going to choose vaccines every time. And that's, I think, right there is the disservice to this conversation because <clears throat> it is a risk-benefit analysis. And what's unfortunate is how downplayed those risks are. I only started investigating vaccines because I ended up with a kid with an autoimmune disorder. Autoimmune disorders have been present before vaccinations were. What's interesting here is, yes, it may not be one in a million or one in two million, whatever the odds are. The bottom line of why it shouldn't be an optional thing of opting out from vaccines, when at least when it comes to public schools, is because A, herd immunity exists, B, it's my job as the doctor to make sure the parent is giving quality care to the child. If the child had a broken bone and the parent wasn't adequately treating it and didn't want to go see a doctor and the child was suffering as a result, I can report them to the proper authorities. It doesn't mean that because they're your child, you can just do whatever. So by not getting vaccinations, it's medically and statistically proven that you're endangering your child to develop these deadly diseases. Therefore, we don't allow you to opt out. At least we don't allow you to opt out from schools and that's sort of our catch-all behind this. The one in a million is not a real number. It's really not. And so the more that that is put out, so people think that, no, it's not, not when you're talking about the different kind of reactions. I think the number you're referring to is anaphylactic shock. The anaphylactic shock is, of course, extremely rare. Whereas when you look at seizures from the MMR vaccine are one in 3,000. But again, this creates fear in parents. Well, we worry that you, that those on your side kind of downplay those. We don't necessarily downplay them. We weigh them against the benefits of getting the vaccine. And if you're getting a vaccine and it's preventing you from getting an illness, which vaccines have been proven over time to do this, the one in 3,000 statistic is difficult to conceptualize for a parent because they don't know how often the actual disease occurs. As a result of this, we as doctors make the recommendation that taking the one in 3,000 risk of having a seizure is worth it to prevent this deadly illness from happening. I don't think it's an idea of downplay. I think it comes back to what we were saying with the risk benefit analysis. And I think the data is very clear. It's so hard not to talk about data when you're talking about vaccines as a doctor, but unfortunately, when you're trying to influence someone and you're trying to change their mind on something, it doesn't work well. And I imagine this is going to fall on deaf ears. It's hard to trust someone who sees your child for 10 minutes twice a year. Uh, in the end, parents know their children best. I actually very much disagree with that statement. The closer you are in relation to the patient, the more likely that your bias is going to be at play. You're not going to be able to make an objective decision. This is why it's strongly discouraged in the medical community to take care of your own family members as a doctor, because your judgment gets clouded and you make bad decisions. So if you were to come to your doctor and say, hey, my child's acting differently after this, this well visit appointment, something's wrong, you want them to trust that you have an established relationship and listen to you. She's absolutely right. If a parent brings in a child and says they're acting differently, that's a huge warning sign. And any doctor that brushes that off and says, ah, I disagree, that's a bad sign from a doctor. I would actually recommend switching doctors or in the room, if you're comfortable, pointing that out to the doctor that you don't think that's the right method and you're not comfortable. If they don't welcome your criticism or your uh, thoughts on the matter, switch doctors. It's really that simple. My daughter has epilepsy 
and in March, she was also uh, diagnosed with uh, juvenile idiopathic arthritis. I went to the rheumatologist, and the rheumatologist said, we're going to put her on methotrexate. And I looked at her, I'm like, methotrexate, that's a chemotherapy, chemotherapeutic agent that you know kids uh, with cancer get. And she's like, yes, but we use it in a low dose, and it doesn't cause harmful side effects, you have to trust me. I said, okay. And I trusted her. And I am so glad that I did. Before all this happened, she was a competitive gymnast. And she used to walk up and down the stairs like she was 90 years old. She couldn't hold a pencil in her hand. Now she's back on the bars, back on the, on the beam, doing things which my wife and I <clears throat> never thought that she would do again. I'm so proud of these doctors that they're coming in and really avoiding digging into data and numbers and confusing and confounding the conversation further. They're telling personal stories. They're making it emotional. They're making it reasonable because this is how you resonate with another human being. It's not about pointing at a pie chart. The people who refuse to acknowledge that vaccine reactions are happening or that the things that happened to my daughter were connected because maybe it was just a coincidence and I just needed something to pin it on. You are socially isolated. You can be isolated by your family isolated by the medical commun community, isolated by society as a whole because they assume you're unintelligent, uneducated, and irrational. I don't think we should become hostile to anti-vaxxers. I think the, the role here is to be compassionate. And when a patient tells me something that I know to be misinformation, I don't get mad at the patient. The feelings that I get are, Oh man, I, I, I'm, it's so unfortunate that you've come to believe that. And this is what I say to myself in my head. How can I find a, a common ground between us so that I can explain to you what's actually happening or what the right steps are to fix this situation? I think where hostility really kicks in is now when a single person refuses to vaccinate their children, but when they become activists to try and encourage other people to not vaccinate their children. That sort of misinformation spreading is really dangerous and that's where it deserves to be struck down right away because if you're not gonna be talking about quality evidence, you're gonna be talking about expert opinion, you're just doing a huge disservice to a lot of families. I have a great deal of compassion for the families that had children die from preventable diseases. There shouldn't be any hostility, there should be discussion. I mean, we can always question things. That's how we evolve, that's how we get better. If we didn't question anything, we'd be still in the dark ages. Huge fan of that doctor. I'm glad they did this, but I am also gonna be a little bit of a skeptic here. The people that were invited from the anti-vaccine side were very reasonable, they were very logical, they talked about their own experiences. If they invited the people that are shouting in front of doctor's offices, if they invited the true activists that think doctors are killing people, if they invite some of the people that email me telling me that I'm killing babies and that I need to watch certain pieces of propaganda that they're spreading around, that would have been a totally different conversation. It would have been hostile, it would have been explosive. The only way that that we can control the situation is by educating those people that are in the middle ground, not by telling them what to do, but by educating them, by explaining how, look how horrible it was before we had vaccines. Talk to the WHO and let them tell you how many lives are lost every minute when children don't have money to get a vaccine. We are blessed to live in a time and in a country where vaccines are made affordable to us, made available to us. In fact, we have a program in my hospital called Vaccine for Children that if you don't even have insurance coverage, we still get vaccines for these children. These are government-aided programs that are not for profit. They're for protection of children. That's what vaccines are all about. They're about protecting children. They're about making sure that we get the best outcomes possible. And we continue to monitor this. If new research occurs that vaccines have a new side effect that we weren't aware of, we take this into account and we up update our recommendations. But as of right now, the benefits outweigh the harms when it comes to vaccines, and you should vaccinate your children just as I will mine in the future, and I recommend the same to all my patients. If you're still curious to learn more about vaccines, click here for my vaccine video. As always, stay happy and healthy.